Yeah, thank you for the question. It's, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. This is a uh, second time for Finland and Sweden as well to be as an MVT member in, the, in this uh, NATO Defense Minister meeting. And uh, today we are discussing also about how to support Ukraine. We have this Ukraine Defense Contact Group meeting and, uh, and Finland is of course participating in that meeting with uh, 40 other, other ministers. And uh, yes, yes, uh, we are also participating in that cooperation, what, what becomes to the Leopard tanks. But we are the frontline state. In, in Finland is the frontline state, so the amount of the, uh, of, the, of the tanks cannot be that, that many. Well, uh, I don't want to talk about the origins of these tanks, but we have, uh, uh, together with the Czech Republic and the United States, provided T-72s who are being refurbished in the Czech Republic. Uh, the second thing is that we now, with Denmark and Germany, uh, are paying for the uh, Leopard 1s. Uh, the, so they are uh, also re acquired from industry, uh, being refurbished and making, being made available for uh, Ukraine as soon as possible, where we know that at least 100 of these uh, Leo 1s can be delivered to Ukraine, and maybe more. We're still working on that. And then, of course, aside from that, there is the tank coalition for the main battle tanks, the more modern ones like the Challenger, the Leo 2 uh, and, the, and the Abrams. Uh, and there we are also, uh, we have very intense cooperation also because it's not only about the main battle tanks, it's also about the training, the ammunition and everything you have to arrange around that. This war could take a long time. Uh, and in that time, the Ukraine armed, Ukraine armed forces have to transition because they were using a lot of Russian uh, capabilities, like the tanks, but also the mix. Uh, and they have to transition to European, American uh, and other capabilities. And in that transition, I completely understand that they also want to transition in their air defense and also with the fighter jets. Uh, I think that has to be part of the consideration that we're going through now. Any kind of help is necessary for Ukraine because uh, Ukraine has to win this war. So uh, we we had many questions: should we send tanks? Now this decision is made. So we had prior to that uh, many questions: how many ammunition we could send? So always there has been a question before and then the answer after that. So and we know that Ukraine needs any kind of help, and that means also the jet fighters. Well, it is important from a Canadian perspective to continually put on the table any aid we possibly have. And we wanted to be amongst the first country. So as soon as uh, Germany uh, released the permission for us to send the tanks, we were right out the door to do that. And that's the approach that Canada has taken from the very beginning. Make sure we are doing whatever we can to support Ukraine with whatever aid we have that it needs. In terms of other countries, we do hope that the work we are doing will play a leadership role in inspiring other countries uh, to follow suit and that's exactly what we are seeing. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, with European Peace Facility, we are providing funding for the member states in Dubai. In the past, the European Peace Facility already did uh, procurements to provide non-lethal arms for countries with whom we have a partnership. I think that the European Peace Facility could perfectly mobilize its resources in a more common way. Now we work country by country. I don't see any inconvenience with the European Peace Facility, which is an intergovernmental fund. It's not European Union budget. You cannot buy lethal arms with the European Union budget. That's clear. But the European Peace Facility is an intergovernmental fund. And this can be used on the way we consider more appropriate. I will present proposals to the Foreign Affairs Ministers on Monday.